right guys we are back with another video just as promised uh today we have a samsung galaxy note 9 uh, that came across my bench and it's not powering on so what i notice is that when i connect my usb amp meter uh, it completely goes bloop and then it tries to power on but uh, uh, essentially it's not coming on so that's either one or two things you have a disconnected power rail or we potentially have an ic or chip or capacitor that's that's pulling down the voltage uh, that's um, impeding the connection for a stable power. So we're gonna go ahead to, over to the overhead bench and then we're gonna go ahead and try to diagnose this phone. So we have different ways that we could actually regulate and monitor uh, voltage and amperage. So we're gonna be picking uh, the USB-C amp meter because this is the one that we're gonna be able to plug into the Samsung uh, via the USB-C. And uh, this would be one like a USB amp meter for USB-A, you plug it into a brick and then the other side you plug in your cable. Um, something like this is kind of uh, just to monitor uh, the power draw and uh, before prompt to boot, after prompt to boot. So you just have to pick the right diagnosing tool uh, or the right di diagnostic tool uh, to be able to figure out what's going on or how much voltage you're pulling or how much amperage is taking away. It's just gotta monitor voltage. When I say monitor the USB, I don't mean literally monitor the USB. Let me break it down. I'll give you an example here. If we switch over to my hand scan and we plug in my iPhone 13 Pro Max, first thing you're gonna see is going to be charging. So all I care about is the blue right here. So my phone is charging roughly around 1.5 amps between 1.4, 1.5 amps. That gives me an indication of how much charge this unit is going to take. Uh, the closer you get to 100% battery life, the lower the amperage. The closer you get to 0% battery life, the higher the amperage. Uh, once you find, uh, you know, a happy medium, if your battery's on 75%, uh, 80%, you may only be charging at 500 milliamps, 600 milliamps. You won't get a full 1.5 or 2 amp charge. So here's our Note 9, cracked up in all its glory. And uh, let's go ahead and get this board out. Now that we have this board out, uh, we simply just need to monitor the USB. Uh, we have to figure out what's going on with the amperage and kind of get some telltale signs from there. So we'll plug this into a USB amp meter and let's see what it does. So it turns on and right back off. On, off, on, off. And I've already tried this with a battery, a good known battery and it's doing the same thing. So let's go over to ZXW real quick and see where our possible issues may occur. So in this particular case, I'm gonna treat it just like any previous Samsung Galaxy Note 9. I'm gonna check this area over here first. Um, we're just gonna go in dial mode and we're gonna pretty much check if we have any shorts around this IC. And then the second IC, what we're, we're gonna check is over here um, because sometimes uh, on a previous Samsung Note 9s that I've worked on in, in the past, I've, I've always had shorts around here. So let's go ahead and bring out the multimeter. We're gonna be in dial mode and we'll see if we can locate this short. So now that we're in dial mode, we can actually just go ahead and check for some general shorts. We have a red probe on ground and we can just check around this general area. That one's good. Get a voltage drop of 0.277, that's good. 563, we're good on that side. Yep, so this area is fine. Let's move over towards the next area. I already took, I already took the shield off and we can start checking around this general area over here. That's good. It's good. Yeah, so we don't have any issues around this general circuit. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna plug up the USB amp meter and then we're gonna turn on our thermal uh, camera to see if we can pick up anything getting hot under thermal imaging. So we're gonna whip out the fancy tools. Let me go ahead and get this turned on first. This thing takes a galactic sun to turn on. 
So the version of the thermal camera that I have today is going to be the micro USB one in conjunction with a uh, macro lens. So this macro lens helps me uh, basically spot objects closer to the board. Let's go ahead and wait for this to boot. I'll go ahead and connect this while that's booting up. We'll go ahead and get this connected to power so we can go ahead and apply USB voltage. Now that we got this guy plugged in, let's go ahead and plug it into the bottom of our charge port. All right, it's gonna have the same symptomatic rebooting on and off, pulsating on and off. So let's go ahead and get our thermal camera connected. So we'll get this loaded up on the Seek app. Once I connect it, it just goes to the Seek app automatically. So I actually prefer to use the Android version because there was so many customers calling me on my phone. Um, so every time I had it connected to my lightning connector, I'd have to, I'd be interrupted in the middle of like almost every repair. So uh, I, now, I now have a dedicated phone. It's just a cheap Motorola phone. So this comes in micro USB. It comes in um, lightning uh, and USB-C. So there's three different versions of this uh, thermal camera. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of hover over the board and see if we see anything light up. The great thing about using a macro lens on the uh, Seek Compact Pro is that I can literally see like all the small components around the whole entire board. So you could even make out like the letters and the wording on like, you know, chips and stuff like that too. So really good tool to have. So something is getting hot. I could even fill it with my gloves on. So something is getting hot around this area. We're gonna go ahead and try to pull this shield off and see what's getting hot under there. This is a shield right here. The one that was getting hot um, under thermal imaging. Uh, let's go ahead and just, let's get ready to pull it off. So since we have two connectors right around the shield, I like to put a little bit of Teflon tape right next to the right next to the shield this will prevent like the uh the connectors from like overheating or burning i don't feel like replacing connectors today All right, so we're gonna go with a little bit of hot air. Come up from a corner. We'll probably even use a uh, 007 hook on the very edge. Let's go from the backside. We just gotta, you just gotta saturate it evenly and then just be patient. We're gonna come up with no problem. There we go. Let's take a look. Let's get a visual inspection. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna simply just use dial mode to figure out where our short's coming from. Hmm. Possibility we have a short here. So we're gonna verify in ohms mode. I'm gonna simply switch to ohms mode and see if we have a low reading. We've got about 5.8 ohms. 5.8 ohms. 0 0.5 ohms. 0 0.6 ohms. Okay. So let me see 
where this coil goes to because the, the coil line probably goes directly to the chip and if i'm getting 0 0.5 in ohms then i'm probably it's probably the, the chip is shorted let's go back to zxw real quick we are over here let's flip this over real quick let's take a look at that coil the coil goes directly to the chip so what we're going to do is just remove that chip and then check the these also go to the, to the chip as well we're going to just remove the chip and just check for um check if the values come back for these capacitors but now that the shield is off let me show you what it looks like under thermal imaging so having a final look at thermal imaging it seems like the coil gets hot first and then the ic gets hot um, so i think my my best approach to this is just to remove the the chip and to see if these caps the dial reading on these two caps that are over here towards the left uh, if we get the reading to come back so let's go ahead and just start with that and see if we were able to restore the, the, the voltage drop reading i'm right, so to remove this chip just add a little nozzle and uh get straight to it my pin one is going to be the top left got a little bit of flux So pin one is my top left. Just to remember, I'm gonna set this one to the side. I'm gonna let this cool down for just a second and then we'll go back to getting some dial readings. So what's the verdict? Let me get back to dial mode. We got 4.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438, 0.438
So it's the camera power I see. I'm gonna try to get a clean lift so I don't have to reball it. Relatively small chip. The trick to get a clean getting a clean lift is having enough flux. And sometimes I like to bump it and lift up real fast. Lift up fast enough. We should have a clean pull. Let's turn this, flip this over. And we should be able to reuse that. To get this ready for reinstallation, I can just line it up with the, uh, the little gold on the corner right there. Let's get this installed. Add just a little bit of flux. I'll move my air this way so we don't run the risk of overheating any kind of connectors or anything. That's more or less where we need to be right there. So we'll start from a little bit far, just to kind of warm up the area. As time goes by, we'll just get a little closer. Since I didn't reball this, this is lead free, so it's gonna take a little bit longer. The balls on the bottom is lead free. I'm getting closer and closer. And it should settle into place right now. That's it. So we've got that installed. I'm gonna reflow it one more time. fine just like I teach my students we don't replace just for the sake of replacing every step of the way we have to test so let me just go back to dial mode real quick good red probe on ground good remember this was 0 0.5 and now we have 0.344, 0 0.344. Okay, let's go ahead and test for power now. Will the USB amp meter stop boot looping? Let's see, let's go ahead and plug it in. Turns on. From step to step, we always just try to pretty much make sure that the behavior changes. So before it would just turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. And after we would replace that IC that was causing the short, now at the very least, the USB and meter actually stays on. I'm gonna get this unit fully assembled and then we can test for power.
All right, let's plug this up and let's just give it a moment to charge. So right now it's only pulling 240 milliamps and I wanna give it a few minutes. So winner, winner, chicken dinner, we have 1.4 amps charging at five volts. Five volts, 1.4 amps. We will give it about another five or 10 minutes to charge and then we'll come back, we'll come back to the phone. We should be on 2% and we're still charging at, well, now we're charging at two amps. So two amp charge. Let's go ahead and hold the power button so we can boot it. We should get a Samsung logo. Boom. Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Charging at 2.2 amps after replacing the uh, shorted IC. Let's wait for it to boot, verify that it's charging. I don't have the passcode, but let's make sure it doesn't hang on any kind of logo. There we go. So there is a little bit of a personal picture, but let's go ahead and go to the emergency dialer. So now we're at the emergency dialer. Customer has dark mode enabled, so it's gonna be really hard to see, but it is charging. The, the battery charge status uh, indicator is prompting that it's charging. So right around here, where my finger is at, that's where you can see the charge. So back to a steady amp, back to normal charging sequence, and this one is fixed. And if you need a repair done like this, click on the website down, down below that you see on the bottom of the screen. The links will be in the description. Uh, we do offer mail-in repairs. So thank you for sticking all the way to the end of the video. I will see you guys actually this week. I have an iPhone XS Max, no touch. Ironically, an iPhone 11, no touch. So I have a couple more videos coming out. Um, also remember to please like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content and uh, we'll see you guys next week.